Welcome back to the Race Weekend. I'm Joe St. George in our Scripps News Washington Bureau. It's time for our Inside the Race panel with our partners from Politico. From Politico, let's welcome back national political correspondent Natalie Allison from Scripps News. We have our legal affairs correspondent Ava Joy Burnett, political analyst Steve uh, Schmidt. Of course, we have uh, Alex Miller in our New York City Bureau as well, national political correspondent uh, Alex Miller. Welcome to all of you. And uh, Natalie, you wrote this week, quote, that Wednesday's filing, we're talking about FTC numbers here, comes after the RN reportedly uh, reported historically low cash levels in 2003, lower than any year in the past decade. I mean, where are the, all the wealthy donors for Republicans? I mean, what are you picking up as the consequence of this? Or is, is staff not being paid or hired? Well, I think it's important to note that 2023 was a year when we saw what was a contentious Republican primary. So the Democrats were already preparing to rally around Joe Biden as he takes on Trump this year. Um, but for the last year, we saw major Republican donors still waiting to see if someone like Nikki Haley and before that, Tim Scott, and before that, Ron DeSantis um, could get some steam, could end up replacing Trump on the ticket. Ultimately, that did not happen. That never came close to happening. Um, but, the, you know, the Republican donor class, they were still watching and waiting last year, and they weren't actively engaged in this. And grassroots donations were down as well. And so I think what we're going to see is that um, there will be some more activity in the next couple of months. And Republicans have a lot of ground to make up between now and November. But yes, it has been a dire um, last 12 months for the Republican Party. We have seen the chair of the Republican Party um, press to, to step down from her role by Donald Trump. Um, she's been replaced by a Trump-selected uh, replacement, Michael Watley. And so, you know, Trump, the spin that the campaign is giving, um, Trump allies or that, all of this is going to turn around. Now that Trump is the nominee, um, there will be this, you know, rally around the nominee effect. Um, but there is a lot of ground Republicans are gonna have to make up uh, with the cash disparity. We spent a lot of time on this show talking about former President Trump's money. Let's talk about President Biden's money. Uh, Alex Miller, you're in New York City, and, and there's going to be a very interesting fundraiser there this week. President Obama, former President Clinton, New York City. What's something like this raising? This is a joint fundraiser. Not every day we see three presidents appear together. It's not. It would be a big fundraiser for anybody, much less somebody like President Biden, who prefers retail politics, more small crowds, one-on-one -on -one conversations. According to NBC, this could have some 3,000 people raising about $10 million. Not everybody has to be a big donor to go to this event. There's a variety of ways to get access to it, one of them being a contest. I have ac uh, I'm on the text messages that the campaign sends out. They have been nonstop sending out these fundraiser uh, text messages for a contest to get into this event. Any dollar donation would get you in. They're sending photos of President Clinton. You have obviously President Biden sending these messages trying to get people to donate. And they have had success getting these kinds of small dollar donations towards this fundraiser. It is going to be a star studded fundraiser with musical acts. Uh, it will be hosted by Mindy Kaling, moderated a conversation by Stephen Colbert. So getting people in the door, obviously. Obviously, the more money you spend, the more access you get. But this is part of the fundraising that they really have done, and they have quite a big war chest, $155 million, raising $53 million alone last month, as you just talked about. That dwarfs what we are seeing from the former president. Uh, and even though Joe Biden you know, prefers to go out into these smaller towns, we have seen him time and time again here in New York City. He's been here a couple times for much smaller events last month. He had one uh, on Broadway at a theater for industry uh, donors and industry supporters. So really trying to continue to grow that, obviously having somebody like President Clinton and President Obama together really will make a huge difference. Steve, you've managed campaigns at the highest level. I mean, we're not going to see a Bush Trump fundraiser here. I mean, how much of a disadvantage, how much of a disadvantage does a lack of party unity play in, in this for, for former President Trump? Uh, or maybe is a little Trump fatigue coming in here? I mean, he's been the leader of the Republican Party for nearly a decade now. There, there has never been a, a president that has controlled the party lock, stock, and barrel like Donald Trump has. His daughter-in-law is running the Republican National Committee along with an election denier, and an overwhelming percentage of small dollar uh, money that's raised by the committee does not go to election efforts. It goes to Donald Trump's lawyers. It is an extraordinary event. And when you look at the cash in the, in the campaign right now, 
it's increasingly certain that Trump is going to have an enormous cash deficit. But in the end, I'm not sure that that matters because of the ubiquity of the coverage and his ability to dominate the culture as he has for the last nine years. With regard to George Bush and the gathering of presidents, no, President Bush will not support Donald Trump. The question is, though, will the man who gave an inaugural address talking about America's role in spreading democracy around the world on January 20th, 2005, put those words into action and support President Biden in an election where American democracy is being tested by comments calling for violence, for retribution, for revenge and lawlessness. And President Bush could play an outsized role later in this campaign should he decide historically to campaign against a Republican nominee who has, who has obliterated the principles of the Republican Party that George Herbert Walker Bush, that Ronald Reagan, and George W. Bush were once part of. Americans have 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 come back around on on Bush, and so this will be this will be a big question in my view in the months ahead. Keep an eye on Bush. Uh, really interesting perspective there. All right, Avid Joy, you're a legal affairs correspondent. Legal bills connected to money here. They're only going to get bigger. I, I want you to be our pulse, right? Where do these? trials stand because as of now there's just question marks over all of them we've got a question mark over classified docs in florida january 6th in washington election interference in georgia and of course we have uh, fraud at the fraud allegation trial in new york give us a, what's what's your update Let's start in New York and go down the coast, shall we? So in New York on Monday, that hush money case was supposed to begin with jury selection. But last week, Friday, we got word of a massive document dump. And because of that, things have been pushed off at least for a month. The issue here is the defendant being Donald Trump, he has the right to go through all of these documents. There are tens of thousands of documents. And Alvin Bragg, the district attorney, even though he says he was ready to go, he wants to ensure that there is nothing that they could come back on on appeal. So he has said, let's push this off for at least 30 days. The judge has granted it. So on Monday, what we're going to see is the parties on both sides will be going in front of the judge, and the judge is going to ask questions about what happened here. Why did we end up at this position where a trial was supposed to be starting on Monday, and then we don't have it? Uh, the thing with that case, though, is it could start sometime towards the end of April. Monday, you talked about money, Joe, is also another big day for the former president because in the other case involving that civil fraud trial where he has to put up at least a half a billion dollars in order to appeal, there are several things that are happening in that. But the bottom line is, will Donald Trump have enough money to put up to post bond in order to appeal, or will there be some other out for him so that he can move ahead and appeal? This is something that the former president has been posting a ton about on social media because he's clearly against the fact that he's been asked to put up a half a billion dollars in order to appeal this judgment against them. That is New York. We come down to Washington, D.C., where we are. Everything is at a standstill right now in that January 6th case, the presidential immunity case, because we're waiting for the U.S. Supreme Court to hear arguments on that. That will happen on April 25th, and the former president has argued that he should not be prosecuted in that matter because he has presidential immunity. So everything is on, on, on hold for that. We go down to Georgia, where they had a really big week because the judge who's seeing that state-level election interference case granted the request of several co-defendants, including former President Donald Trump, to be able to appeal a ruling that that judge, Scott McAfee, had last week, where he said the district attorney is able to stay on the case if somebody else who she hired, who she had a romantic relationship with, is no longer on that case. So that matter is ultimately possibly going to go to an appeals court. Everyone is watching to wait to see what's going to happen with that. And the classified documents case, it's still tied up in pretrial motions and hearings. That is kind of a sleeper case. Uh, they have a May 20th trial date still on the books, but that will undoubtedly change. A lot of people anticipate that 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 will be pushed as well, Joe. Well, did you get all that, folks? <laughs> That's a busy calendar. Um, please don't go on vacation. Uh, Alex Miller and Ava Joy, you guys will be busy. Natalie, Steve, Ava Joy, Alex, thank you so much for your discussion, for your insight. As always, ahead on the race weekend.